Welcome to the IHSA Boys Class A Basketball Championships presented by Country Companies. When it matters most, the country's behind you. And by Pepsi. Nothing else is a Pepsi. Hi again, everyone. I'm Steve Cashel. Time for the big one in the Class A. Here we go, the championship game. It's going to be Spring Valley Hall and Warsaw. Time to toss it down to our play-by-play -play team for tonight's contest. Here is Jim Blaney and Norm Van Leer. Gentlemen. Cash, thank you very much. One of these two teams will be the Class A basketball champion in the state of Illinois in 1997. Warsaw at 28-3, Spring Valley Hall 27-5 coming into this game. Jim Blaney along with Norm Van Leer. And Norm, we've seen Warsaw play hard in this tournament. We've seen them give maximum effort. One more game to go, and they could very well end up state champions. Uh, no doubt about it, but I tell you what, both teams come in with similar styles and aggressive play and intensity, which is a style I like. They play defense, they're smart, they move the ball, they do things that are necessary to win. So this should be an exciting uh, uh, championship game here. The big three for Warsaw, they're averaging 57 points a game here in the tournament in Peoria. Meanwhile, for Spring Valley Hall, they've got a little bit of unfinished business taken care of. There are five starters on the team, all played football. They lost in the 3A football title game earlier this year, but if they're going to be carried to a state basketball title, there's one guy you look for on this team, and that's Sean Jepson, number 20. No doubt about it. He's a scorer, he's a shooter, and he will get points for you. And as he goes in his points and the way he plays basketball, he brings the team with him and carries him on his coattail. He is third in scoring in the tournament here in Peoria, and it's not a one-man team at Spring Valley Hall, but make no mistake about it, if Jepson and Spring Valley Hall are going to win a state title, they're going to have to indeed get a big game tonight. Jepson is going to have to show the way, if they are indeed, to get the business, business. Get the business right. finished. They didn't get done in normal in the fall when they didn't get a chance to carry off the state football title for the second year in a row. We are at Carver Arena for the championship game. It is now time to enjoy the national anthem and the IHSA has a student from Rochester High School here to sing the anthem tonight. Singing the anthem for everybody is Lisa Voss. As Lisa Voss, a student at Rochester High School, sings our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the Chester High School. Good evening, basketball fans. On behalf of the Illinois High School Association and the city of Peoria, welcome to America's original March Madness. Tonight's championship game in Carver Arena features the Warsaw Wildcats, a record of 28 and three, and the Hall Township Red Devils, a record of 27 and five. Let's meet the starting lineups. For Warsaw, at a forward, a 6'3 senior, number 40, Bob Manley. For Hall Township, at a forward, a 6'5 junior, 34, Joey Reed. The other forward for the Wildcats, a 6'4 
Jr., number 42, Bill Heisler. The other forward for the Red Devils, a six foot two junior, number 20, Sean Jepson. The Warsaw Center, 6'6", senior, number 44, Craig Weir. And the Hall Township Center, a 6'7", junior, number 45, Nick Sterling. Had a guard for the Wildcats, a 6'0", senior, number 20, Dan Belt. And a Red Devils guard, a 5'11", junior, number 22, Ryan Andres. The other guard for Warsaw, a six foot senior, 32, Paul Figgy. And the other guard for Hall Township, a six one senior, number five, Eric Bryant. Coaching Warsaw. In his third season, his career record of 69 and 14, Jeff Dahl. And Coach Hall Township. Jeff, Jeff Dahl, the coach of Warsaw, years. said we came into this tournament looking for a little respect. Well, they've got that. Now they want to try and get a title. There's their starting lineup presented to you by Country Companies Insurance. And Eric Bryant, he of the very Natalie attired red suit. He's got his son, Eric, starting at one of the guards. And he's trying to get a state title as well. The officials for tonight's game, Ray Albert Jr. of Odin and Gary Traub of St. Elmo. Let's go to Yvonne Simmons. Hey, you guys, even though this is the first ever championship appearance for both teams, postseason pressure is nothing new for Spring Valley Hall. All five starters were members of the football team that were runners up at the Class 3A title game. Hall also finished as state champions in the 3A 95. Eric Bryant was the first team all state. Sean Jepson was the starting quarterback. So this team has been tested in pressure situations, should give an edge to Spring Valley Hall. And among those in attendance here tonight at Carver Arena is the state of Illinois' number one basketball fan. That's Governor Jim Edgar on the right and on the left is Governor, there's uh, Mayor Jim Maloof of Peoria. And the governor's got a pretty good seat, which he should have. Opening bucket of the game, Red Devils had the first opportunity. Bryant tossed it out. And now the Red Devils will set up with their half-court offense. Sean Jepson, his first drive to the hole, and gets a pair. And he took that to the hole, and Warsaw was in a man-to-man. -man. And they fall back in a zone themselves. And uh, I'll tell you what, Coach Bryant has taken off his red jacket, and he is ready to rock. He might have gotten that from you, Norm. Yeah, I didn't go that wild. <laughs> I may have some loud ones, but not that quite. Uh, not the entire red suit? Not at all. But hey, that's what it's all about. This is fun. I even saw the devil walk across the street today. Yeah, we did last. That <laughs> was no. we were going to lunch, right? Three pointer on the way by Heisler, and he picks up right where he left off in the semifinals. And I tell you, he's a key situation. The Pete Maravich fan, uh, one of them, because I know a couple of them love the Pete Maravich. But that was a good shot, and they start off right away. That being the hall. Beautiful oh, look to Jepson. Ready to go. Both teams don't seem nervous about anything out here today. Dan Belt, who's been controlling things very well. Heisler goes for two in a row. Got it! Boy, this is going to be a shootout by indication the way it started. These two teams are smoking out of the gate. Yeah, oh, yeah, they're, ready. they're really tired from having to have played early this morning, right? Forget it. These guys could play all night if they had to have been men winning a state title. Bryant goes down to the baseline, keeps moving, and gets two. And in one phase of that, Jim, they may be tired of playing defense, but they sure not <laughs> tired of playing offense. Nobody ever gets tired of playing <laughs> offense. Eric Bryant comes away with the rebound for Hall. Both teams are very aggressive. Like I said, Warsaw's in a man-to-man -man at this point. But I tell you what, the Hall is moving the ball extremely well on the offensive end. Very crisp. Jepson lost the handle. Good and save. a great save by Manley. Kept it in. Heisler, you know what? If I'm him, I jack it up again. I'm hot. I keep shooting until I miss. But he got to get it where he's got the, in the form and, and not go one on one until it comes to you. And no shot. Long before the shot was taken, the foul committed. It'll be the first foul call of the game. It will go against Spring Valley Hall. Jepson gets the call. His first personal foul. And you get a good look at Eric Bryant. And Warsaw, respectively, is moving the ball also down the court. And they're moving it well. 6-6, Warsaw has the ball. Dan Belt, Heisler, he's open, jacks it up, three in a row, no. That one was just a little bit short. 
And that foul call is going to go against Bob Manley. He got in foul trouble early in the semifinal game. Jeff Dahl had to pull him out of the game. Well, you see the replay. Here's a shot, another good look. He didn't hit this one. Eisler this time. Manley came in. You might as well put him down for two fouls early because <laughs> that's his style. You know, he comes at it and hits. But I like that, Norm. The Heisler's hot. Give him the ball. Keep giving him the ball. Why not? See, that comes from coaching and team play. And I think team members realize what's going on, and they do indeed find their hot man. And that's why I say you wait for it. Bryant misses the shot, but right there for the putback of the foul is Joey Reed. And all the buckets by the hall have been layups. You got to stop that right now. If you want to get points in the paint, you're going to be in trouble all night. Dan Belt open. Nice look inside. Baseline jumper by Weir goes down. Craig Weir had 17 points in the opening half of the semifinal game. He had a huge game in the semis. Now Spring Valley Hall tied up at eight, looking for the lead. Jepson will take it right on the money. Boy, he set that up. He poised and paused and looked. Should I shoot it? Should I not? Yes, I will. And he canned it. 11-8. Hall has the lead by three. Just underway here in the Class A title game for 1997. Jim Blaney along with Norm Van Leer at Carver Arena in Peoria. And the Hall's in his own. Get it low, down low. Weir couldn't hit. Manley had it just flat taken away by Joey Reed. And he took it away. He just came in, a little bump, bruise, hit, boom, got the ball out. Now you set up, as the Hall does, against the man to man at Warsaw's attempting to play. Devils trying to add on to a three point lead. Jepson got rid of it. Jumper on the way. Andre A's, and that one didn't rattle in. He had the soft touch. He went in and out and should have been down in there, but it came out. Top of the key, Heisler goes to the foul line, little runner. I'll tell you what, that sure is a soft rim down there at that end, isn't it, Norm? Oh, either that or he just has a beautiful soft touch. And Andres was fouled as he went to the bucket. He should get an opportunity here to shoot a couple of free throws, and indeed he will go to the line. Now, Warsaw has to get to at least the first game they played this afternoon against St. Francis. They were fouled. The, the, the fact that they ran a break from out of bounds where it scored or not. Get used to that and get back on defense because you can't allow that after you score a goal to get a fast break on the other end. Randy Crow, who played a lot of effective minutes in the semifinal win over St. Francis to Sales earlier today, checks into the game. Get a good look at Ryan Andres, a 78% free throw shooter. So two very good free throw shooting teams, and if it comes down to that, you're going to see some guys who can really fire free throws. Well, Andres misses two of two there. 407 remaining. Here in the opening quarter, Hall leads it by one. Warsaw has the ball. Neither one of these teams have ever been this far in the Class A tournament. Weir turns toward the baseline, and he, it's unbelievable the way he's been able to move around with some bigger people on him during these two games today. That was a Kevin McHale's move right there. That was just post low, keep the pivot foot there. It looked like he might have stepped. But he had planted that pivot foot and had a nice, beautiful move to the hoop. Backing in is Nick Sterling, known more for his rebounding than his scoring, but he picks up two there. Hall leads at 13-12. Both teams are pumped and ready to go. I still say there was a bit more of intensity on the defensive end with both these squads in our last game. Belt, an NBA three-pointer. That's short. Our man Jacko got the rebound, but couldn't keep it in possession of Warsaw. And that was a good football move right there. He solidly threw that ball inbound. Man! Sean Jepson. Second three-pointer of the game. Did he square up and make that look nice or what? That's why he's a leading scorer. And a that's scorer. a big foul there. That's number two on Sean Jepson. So he's loaded up and hit two big three-pointers, but he's also picked up two personal fouls here in the early going. 3.03 remaining here in the first quarter. Hall has jumped out to a four-point lead. Warsaw will have the ball when we come back after this timeout. Officials turn out of the court. Yvonne Simmons is standing by with Governor Edgar. Yvonne? Governor Edgar, what is your perception of this March, March Madness experience? Well, it's great. It's something I've been doing coming to these games since I was in high school. This is a great opportunity for all these schools, and particularly these small communities. This is the biggest thing that happens each year. Yeah, and this small communities, and they've really brought the whole town out. Can you just tell you, you've had to campaign down there how important that is for them? Well, there's a lot of pride in their schools, and of course, the state basketball tournament gives them a chance to showcase their pride. And, so they're all very happy to be here. Okay, thank you. Enjoy the evening. Jim, back to you. Thank you, Yvonne. 
And the governor has seen Hall jump out to a four point lead here in the early going. Field goal shooting so far. Both teams have been hot because they've been getting shots in the inside, although we have seen four three pointers combined in this game in the early going. Jackal kicked it out. Crow goes to Belt. Wants to go inside to Weir. Makes the catch, makes the turn, gets the bucket and gets fouled. Oh, nice ball movement. Good patience that time to set that up. I was getting ready to say that Randy Crow should have moved in just a tad. Because he had a shot opportunity. I guess he's not in here to shoot, but when that ball's moving and you're in the zone, but see the replay, that was just a good uh, bit of ball movement and good play right there. He's just, he's had a series. I'm telling oh, you. Oh, is he having a tournament? He's third in the tournament in rebounding. He's fifth in scoring. Missed the free throw. Rebound by Eric Bryant. So far, everybody's missed their free throws in this game. And boy, we're going to get down to the end here. And that's going to be so, so critical. Always seems to be. Shot from the baseline is partially blocked. Heisler got the rebound and another foul in Spring Valley Hall. Well, good position to get the rebound to begin with. And if you're going to get that rebound by way of Hall, you're going over someone's back. And that's what the call was all about on that situation. We should point out that Sean Jepson is still in the game. He's playing with two fouls. I was just ready to bring that up that through this zone, I think he's smart enough and clever enough to maintain his poise and keep his cool out there and not reach in and do something that would cause him to get his third foul would be a very critical point at this time. Weir makes the catch. Double team tosses it back out. Crow got it over on the wing. Good ball movement. Jacko, his pass hit the bottom side of the rim. Turnover on Warsaw. Hall has the ball moving up the floor. Bryant gives to Jepson. Jepson wants to break it down and go one on one with Crow. Takes the jumper and got it. That was a heck of a shot. Off balance and by way of a deflected shot, and he still kept his poise, kicked the legs like an old Barnett, and canned it. Jacko, he'll take a three. That was no good. Sterling with the rebound. Jepson has 13 of Hall's 19 points so far. He's a perfect five for five from three point land. Now he's posted. Three for three, check that. Missing the jumper was Mike Spoonmore. Ball goes out of bounds and it will be turned over to the Wildcats. Well, he's cool as a cucumber out there, man. You just look at him on the field. Well, it's we all serious business about him. We set it on one end of the floor, Norm will say it on the other. If I'm the Hall Devils, I keep giving the ball to Jepson until he misses one. Well, if you're giving milk, you milk it. That's right. And when it runs dry, maybe look somewhere else. Weir triple team turns. Couldn't beat the triple. Hall, a little opportunity to push, push it up the floor. Bryant. Warsaw still getting the ball inside against that zone that, that Hall's playing. To. Spoonmore, fall away. That was a little strong. Batted around and kept alive and finally pulled down by Crow. Caught a little too much adrenaline flowing there. 103 remaining. Nice pass. Good defense. Weir couldn't get the handle. Dan Belt did. Now he's trapped in the corner. Has to get rid of it somehow. Made a nice step out to Crow. Baseline, Jacko. Guarded by Sterling. Jacko goes up. Great job of defense by Sterling. Be Here comes Jepson. One on one charge. with Crow. Spots up four in a row. No, not quite. Rebound pulled down by Belt. 39 seconds remaining in the first quarter. I'll tell you what took away from that offense the opportunity to drive to the hoop. Jacko was pushed as he put it up, and it will not count. Oh, that's a tough one. That's a tough one there. He was turning around ready to shoot. I know it's not a continuation, but. Man, look at this again. You tell me that he wasn't going to. All right, here's the play. Ball, nice pass, bounce in. He's ready to go up. You gotta give him that. You gotta give him that field goal. You have got to give him that field goal because he was in the act of shooting. Now. That was not on the floor before he shot it, but nonetheless, it was called. It was quick. It was decisive. Now you take it out and see what you can do from here. Heisler will get a little bit of a blow here for the remainder of the quarter. Good move by Jeff Dow. Gets him out with 30 seconds to go in the quarter. Give him a little extra rest going into the second. That's called a loose ball right there. Only the break. I thought it was called the other way, but. Ryan Jacko gets the foul, his first. It was a tough one because you had a rebound layup on a second chance shot for Heisler, but uh, well, what can you say? It's one of those things where I should say was going for the two points. Full court press, not to harass, so only to harass, not to steal the ball. Well, let's see if they try and set Jepson up for a three pointer, and let's see if they run the clock down. 18 seconds remaining in the quarter. There's the drive and a nice stick by Eric Bryant. Well, I tell you right now, 
Hall seems to have the more uplift uh, beat going into this game, and Noah and their aggressive play are going to the hoop. Belt corner of the lane didn't hit. Dual possession. Jacko tied up with the ball with Adam Kern. It will go back to Warsaw. Now looking down at the bench to see if Jeff Dahl might want to get Heisler into the game. He opts not to. 2.7 seconds remaining. The next most frequent three-point shooter is Belt, and he's the inbounder. Crow wanted to get it back to Belt. Puts it up. Good if it goes. It doesn't go. They had the shot. Just didn't go. But they had the play in the shot. What a great first quarter of play. Not so hot for Warsaw. They're trailing by seven. Hall leads 21-14. The Warsaw cheerleaders counting on their team, picking up a seven-point disadvantage. Hall with an outstanding first quarter. Let's take a look at some of the first quarter stats. And the shooting outstanding for Spring Valley Hall, especially from three-point land. Yeah, one individual. Yeah, no kidding. Backdoor, Jepson, great catch. Kept his dribble, kept the ball. Now needs a little help. Beautiful feed underneath. Unfortunately, they couldn't finish it off. And now, putting it back up was Nick Sterling. Didn't get the bucket, but he was fouled. Well, I still say, Jim, the energy that was spent by Warsaw to get here in the manner they had to get here against a much taller team in St. Francis, to me, is showing its rare right now on the boards. Because this team is very aggressive, very intense, early and blocking off people and this game is just overshadowed by the aggressive play that Hall has. Not to say they didn't work hard to get here but sometimes the road to this championship when playing twice a day is, it takes its toll on how you really managed to get here. Nick Sterling hits one of two free throws. What a nice rebound by Weir. Spring Valley Hall leading by eight. Still in the zone that being the Hall. We're, we're thought about it. No this is a man to man. They switched up the man to man. Corner of the lane, Heisler. That one wouldn't go in. And the rebound pulled down by Nick Sterling. Oh, there Nick Beautiful Sterling. pass. Knocked out of bounds. Nice recovery on defense by Randy Crow. And the Spring Valley Hall That's fans don't it. agree with the call. He knocked it out, as uh, indicated by the official. But if nothing else in that pass, once again, is that fast break, regardless of a field goal's made or not, looking to look down the court for the easy layup. And Warsaw had to deal with that against St. Francis early in this game of day. Stop that after the first quarter. Top of the key, Heisler looking for three, got it. His third three-pointer of the game, he's got 11. Warsaw down by five. Oh, they needed that shot too. Yes. Bryant, the coach's son, made his spin move, didn't get away from Heisler. Did use his dribble though, now dumps it in. Sterling turns on Weir, made a nice dish for the man coming down the lane. That was Mike Spoonmore, but he couldn't get the finish. Big possession now for Warsaw. Heisler. That should be offensive. No, it should be a little active. He wasn't set. It should be a block. And that's a good call by the fish because he definitely wasn't blocked. He saw it right in front of me. It came down. He moved over. He didn't squarely hit him. He just barely touched him on the side. And he got away with it. You're right, Norm. You know, did his little crossover, as we call it. I wonder if you learned that from Iverson. <laughs> 16 foul on Hall. The difference is he's not carrying the he's ball. He's not yakking. Because he's not carrying. They don't call, they call carrying in high school. Dan Belt fouled as he put it up. It didn't go. And the foul is going to be pinned on Eric Bryant, his first. That was a nice move, a head fake, pump fake. As I look up into the rafters here and see number 31, Chet Walker, they remind me of the great pump fake that Chet used to display on the hardwood of the pro league. Dan Belt on the foul line. Now, he has made... And I'm not trying to jinx him, folks. I'm just telling you the way it is. He's made 16 free throws in a row in the tournament at this moment. What's the record? The record is 18, but the way I read the record book, the record is 18 in a game. Not over, extended over. Not over two games. That's 17 in a row now. I checked it in the record book, and the way I read it, it, it was consecutive for a game. It didn't have a record listed for consecutive over a span of games. Well, the fact of the matter is, Dan Bell has 18 free throws in a row made. Jepson, he was left open for a second, moves it a little closer, pops and got it. Oh, he's deadly. He can flat fire it. He's deadly. 24-19, Warsaw down by five. Heisler a little bit out of control, and he got a break. Yes. He got a break. I, I'm not so sure. 
It uh, wasn't. I mean, you got to be square. Oh, I'm not talking about the foul, Norm, but don't you admit that he was out of control going down? Oh, he was definitely out of control. But uh, here you go, right here. Spin. And then definitely it's a foul. It's definitely a foul. Oh, you know, yeah. What he did is created a foul for himself. Right. And then it's squared up. They can boo and then say those things. But hey, when you get to the hoop, you got to be squared up. Heisler couldn't hit the first one. An 84% free throw shooter and normally a very good free throw shooting Warsaw team. Just two of four from the line here in the early going as we approach six minutes remaining here in the second quarter. Warsaw's in a man to man. They continue to play that. Jepson trying to lose Crow. Couldn't do it. Bryant, top of the key, shoots over Heisler and didn't get the roll. Nice rebound underneath by Froman. That shot was taken. I thought it was forced more than anything else. It created a bad situation for himself. He still got it up there and almost made it. Crow bounce pass inside. Weir, every time he's touched the ball, he's been triple teamed. Didn't have the touch on that one. Bryant with a nice rebound on the defensive end. We got a little shoving match going on up the floor. Tipped out by Belt. Nice catch by Jepson. I'm telling you right now, the sharper team right now is definitely Hall. They're on the, the money and they're a little sharper, they're a little intense, they're a little more aware of where the ball is, and those little things are not happening by accident. Here's a tip, boom. S Spoonmore just had the ball come into his lap. Right. But you gotta be aware of those type of things and the heads up basketball, and that's what's going on right now. Kind of looks like Doogie Hauser. <laughs> Neil Patrick Harris. Seven point lead. Doogie plays all bad guys now. You notice that in his movie? He's trying to get a new image. Heisler got rid of it. Belt. Saw some big guys around, started swinging it around. Heisler, long three, got it. Oh, he's on fire himself. His three-pointer of the game. It's a four-point lead for Hall. Slowly, slowly see a little more pickup by Warsaw here. Maybe we ought to just play to 100, you know what <laughs> hey. Both teams are playing some excellent offense, and I tell you, the defenses that got him here, Three-pointer on the way, that's short. Froman comes up with the loose ball. And I tell you at times, Jim, what can be a bad sign. You hit a couple three-pointers like they've hit now. Now all of a sudden everybody's looking to hit three-pointers and forget to play your inside game. And what got you here, good ball move. You start settling for threes. Belt inside, Weir makes his move, turns and got the roll that time. It's a two-point game. And that put, you know, they changed my theory on that because he went down low, had patience, and got it to Weir, who's missed a couple, but had the shot by just getting the ball down low. And after a while, it's going to take his toll. Eric Bryant got a screen, goes baseline around. Froman puts it up, a little short on the chip shot. And we get a foul called underneath. Foul will go against the Red Devils. Oh. I thought it was just out of Adam place. Curran was in the area. Let's see who the call is on. It goes against Eric Bryant. Here's the replay you see right here. Goes on Eric Bryant, his second. Get pick right here, a little roll. Well, he went up strong. Looked like it was out of bounds unless he called coming over the back because that was one of those plays I thought right there was just an out of bounds play. Both teams hustling and yelling for the ball and a good box out after the shot was missed. By Eric Bryan. Craig Weir, his only problem has been free throw shooting. 64% in the season. He's 0 of 2 in the game. Four minutes exactly remaining here in the second quarter. If you hit the free throws, it'd be up right now. Right. Eric Bryant harassed by Heisler. What position do you play in football? Eric Bryant, I believe, was one of the receivers. Looks like he's one of the linebackers. He is tough. Randy Crow picks up his first personal foul. I know Jepson was the quarterback. Jepson ran the show. He's running the show now. Jepson comes to the foul line. Jepson now puts himself into the scorebook in the free throw column. He's got 16 in the game. He's the best free throw shooter on the team at 82%. Sean Jepson. In all the times he has shot the ball in this game, three three-pointers, three regular field goals, and two free throws, he's only missed one time. Spring Valley Hall leads it by four. This is the Class A championship game. Hall leading Warsaw, 28-24. We're about midway through the second quarter. The teams have been lighting it up from three-point land. The field goal shooting overall pretty darn good, too. No doubt about it. 
Good well, some movement with this basketball as you see Hall in the man to man. Screen by Weir. Heisler still couldn't get free. Goes behind the back. Hit Weir. 15 foot around the way is good. Weir. All right. That was created solely on Heisler's moving and uh, dribbling and getting creating something. He seems to be rubbing his left knee. As if he's got knee. Looks like he got skinned a little bit too, Norm. Bryant, great first step getting to the hole. Goes off glass and gives Hall back a four point lead. Yeah, Bryant saw that and attacked like a shark in that one. Crow travel. One of the turnovers, and I always say this is a good ball handling team, but they're prone and they've shown that they can really turn it over a good number of times during the game. Ryan Jacko back into the game and going out as Froman. Tell you, something's going to happen now that Jacko's back in there. Always does. And Eric Bryant, once again quarterbacking the Red Devil offense. Coming up on three minutes remaining in the second quarter. Hall leads it by four. They have the ball. Heisler got a little bit over aggressive on defense. He's going to pick up his first personal foul. No doubt about it. A little bit uh, too far out to get that way and have a foul called against you that far away from the hoop. You can see it again right here. A little too much body contact. Reaching in, a little bumping. When you're 30 feet away from the hoop, you don't need to uh, create yourself and put a foul on yourself like that. Let's see where Jepson goes off the inbounds play. Came off a couple of screens and ended up being just hand of the ball. Red Devils will go back into their regular offense now. There's a man to man being played by Warsaw, which they usually play man to man. You know, they'll pop up players on every now and then. Jepson follow away. Oh, geez, is that any good or what? I'm Man, sure. was that a beautiful move. Yeah, he got some spring on that. You know what he reminds me of is Doug Collins' son a little bit. Chris? Yes. Back in his high school day. Played at Glenbrook North? Yes. Definitely his high school day. His approach in offensive positive mode that he usually gets into. Crow in the corner. Gave it up for Heisler. Crow gets it back. Looked inside for Weir, couldn't get it in there. Good job by Jepson of defense. Dan Belt came out on top of the key. Little 10 foot runner that wouldn't go. Battled around by Sterling. He kept it alive and then pulled down the rebound. Despite not following through enough on that. Getting in there, making his move, and not getting through there. Hall leads it by four. Six. Two minutes. Chet, you're right. Two Six point lead. That beautiful that. jumper to fade. Jepson hit a while ago. That one wouldn't go. Jacko came down with the rebound, and then he was hacked on the arm by Mike Spoonmore. He picks up his second personal and foul. The, the Red Devils uh, from the hall, man, they're, they're reaching in a tad too much on the rebounds. They're being very aggressive, and that, that's okay. But you got to stop piling up the fouls on yourself by reaching in like that. And if I tell you now, if Warsaw hits some of these free throws, it's just a different ball game by way of the score. One thing that we've forgotten about too a little bit is the fact that Jepson is playing with two fouls. He picked them up early. He was left in the game, and he hasn't come close. And the question is, Norm, does Coach Eric Bryant decide, okay, I've uh, I've sat at the table long enough here. It's time to cash in my chips and get him to the bench. Well, there's certain individuals on your basketball team that you know what they're about, and the coach has been around too long not to know that this guy. It's probably uh, keep himself out of that situation. But then again, there's always room for that accident or that cheap foul or that I just stumbled into it. So maybe you'll reach a point when you get down around that minute mark that maybe you yank him out just for safety's sake. Jacko hits two of two, makes it a four-point game. Bryant got back the ball. Top of the key for Sterling. Jepson makes his first move, goes down to the baseline. Nothing there, pulls it back out and reattacks. Oh my goodness, what a And move. we're going to get a blocking foul down on the baseline. Ryan Jacko was in the area, but I believe oh, the foul man. call is going to go against Bill Heisler, number 42. I tell you right now, watch this move. A little pop, a little Michael Jordan move back here between legs. Here I come, I'm coming back at you. And you, I, if it wasn't for the elbows on that block, that was a sensational move. There was a foul away from the ball on Adam Curran. So now we'll go down to the other end of the floor, and Jack was going to shoot two free throws, an opportunity to make this a two-point game. Jepson had a move there. I, I don't even realize how beautiful that move was just a while ago there. They're so smooth and so subtle. Oh, these guys, these young kids handle the ball today like no other. Jacko misses the free throw. You mix that with the, the, the idea to pass the ball, move without it at times. You're, you're doing your thing here. Warsaw now three of seven from the foul line. The ball came back out to Froman. Heisler looking for room, couldn't find any. Shaw top of the key. Heisler inside. Weir kicked it back out. Heisler open for a three, takes it. 
that one wouldn't go. Tipped and kept alive by Jacko. And he got the foul, and that's going to be number two on Jacko. Here's the problem right now for Warsaw, Norm. They've taken Dan Belt out of the game. We've talked a lot about the big three. Well, right now you're down to two, just Heisler and Weir. And it's causing a little bit of a problem offensively for Warsaw. I don't, I don't want to sit here and take anything away from the Hall and their approach and what they're bringing to the table. But I still say that the game before this that Warsaw had to play has definitely, in my opinion, taken a lot out of this basketball team against St. Francis. And let's face it, thus far, Hall has taken care of it. You know him, Norm? Yeah, that's the devil. Pleased to meet you. <laughs> Hope you guessed my name. <laughs> <laughs> Adam Curran back into the game. You know, one of these kids for Hall, if you're the Red Devils, somebody ought to be number 13, don't you think? Uh, well, somebody ought to grab that jersey. <laughs> Jefferson on the line. Or well, he should wear 66, and another one should wear six. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to beat his free or his uh, scoring average for the season with that free throw right there. He's already got 21 in the first half with a minute 17 to go. Let's see. He shot the ball a total of 12 times in the game now and free throws and everywhere else he's only missed once. And that's not a lot of shooting when it comes down to total points yet. That's just the fact that he's hitting everything. Weir wants to go one on one. A little strong. Pulled down by Jacko. Weir got it back. Exactly one minute remaining. Belt takes a three. Got it. You gotta get him on track. You gotta get the big three. If they're gonna be involved in this game, or so you gotta get the big three involved because that's what they relied on all year long and they need it now. Well, I think what Jeff Dahl was trying to do there is steal a little bit of extra rest for Belt. He did it at the end of the first quarter with Weir. Ooh. Bryant got it back. Bryant got away with a hole, too. On that one. See what Jeffson does. He gives it up for Bryant. Jeffson backing away from the hoop, making some room for everybody else. That jumper short and. The rebound was batted back in the air by Derek Bear. And Jocko, I mean, got me Jocko. I got a friend of it. That was another call there on boxing out. You know, if he bent down, you watch this. If we, I don't know if we got this on replay. Watch this. If he stood straight up and boxed out, you're not, you would have not got this call against you. But he bent back instead of holding your ground. And they're going to call it every time in high school. I can tell you that now. Jacko goes out with his third personal foul. Bob Manley checks back in. David Sharp comes into the lineup for Spring Valley Hall. Sean Jepson goes out, and Eric Bryant doing what we saw Jeff Dahl do at the end of the first quarter. Get one of your big guys out at the end of the half. Get him a little extra rest. And also, you got uh, your best shooter out. You not get that second, third foul on him at 30 seconds. I thought he would do it 20 seconds ago. Good move by the coach. You don't want to get an accident on the third foul. Eric Bryant Sr. wants one shot. Eric Bryant Jr. has the ball. And away from the ball, we're going to get a foul called. And they're calling a very Derek tight Bear. game, uh, Jim. They're starting to call every little thing that goes on in here. And I tell you what, the intensity and the physical play in the previous games I've seen, they just let them play. But right now, you're talking about a situation where different set of officials and you get a different type of a game call. So the kids just have to suck it up. The coaches got to allow them to adjust to officials call from previous games of just banging and hitting and playing the type of game they played earlier today. Bob Manley on the free throw line. His first visit to the foul line of the game. 29% shooter. He's got the Pete Maravich socks going as well. I'll tell you, if they can get in a rhythm, Warsaw, and hit some of his free throws, it certainly changes the, the outlook of this game. And it's close uh, as it is, despite the fact that some hot shooting by Jets. That would have made it a one point game. Weir had it for a second. It's pulled out of there by Sharp. The, uh, 14 seconds remaining. Dang, that against the pretty hard there, buddy. And Aaron Bryant zone. with the ball. Warsaw's in a 1 2 2 zone. Bryant stops, goes up with it, and hits. Clutch bucket by Eric Bryant. Eight in the first half for him. The Red Devils of Spring Valley Hall. They'll take a four point lead to the locker room. They're leading Warsaw 36 32 in the 1997 Class A championship game. We make the presentations to the third and 
So Eric Bryant will go to the locker room, talk to his charges, see if they can carry through with this four-point lead in the second half. If they do, they will come up with a state championship. Let's go to Yvonne. She's with Warsaw, Coach Jeff Dahl. Coach, I can read faces by your reaction. What are you thinking right now? I think our intensity on defense, our awareness on defense is not the way it should be right now. We've got to see ball. We've got to see man. We have to get through the picks correctly. I mean, we're doing some things now that we haven't done the whole tournament, and it's hurting us. Do you think because you played earlier has any effect on it? Maybe a little tired? You guys were kind of tight. Yeah, we did look a little tight. I don't know. Uh, you know, we'll see in the second half if we're tired. I, we're going to come out and play defense better, though. We will play defense better in the second half. Okay, go have a chat with them, all right? <laughs> Jim, back to you. They will play defense better. When the coach says that, you know those guys are going to be listening in the locker room. Spring Valley Hall leads it over Warsaw, 36-32 at the half. Steve, thank you very much, not only for tossing it out here, but for referring to us as gentlemen as well. <laughs> Spring Valley Hall leading Warsaw by two here at the half. Norm, I am amazed at the three-point shooting we saw in the opening half. It was incredible. Jepson and Heisler were unbelievable. No doubt about it. They're squaring up. They're shooting. They're concentrating, falling through. And plus, their teammates are getting them basketball to get in that position to put on this show they're putting on this first half. Let's take a look at the opening half highlights, shall we, and see how, indeed, Hall was able to build up a four-point lead. Heisler got hot first, nailing down some three-pointers. And then that way, everybody started firing up the threes. Jepson rained some down in the early going as well. No doubt about it. At times it can get contagious, and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it, most of these teams hold their poise and work the ball and work inside, as you see here. Craig Weir had a lot of his points inside early in the first half, and then Hall was able to shut him down a bit, and then Jepson just has some unbelievable moves. He was losing people all over the place. Oh, no. Now Heisler goes to the behind-the-back dribble. No doubt about it. Both these guys are the main uh, catalyst for their uh, respective teams, and they're just doing a show right now. That's why it's a four-point lead. Uh, by way of the hall. Weir spun to the baseline, then spun back, and then Dan Belt, who has been relatively quiet, he had a great quarterfinal game. He's been quiet in the semifinals, and so far in the finals, got a three there. He had five points in the opening half. Here are our Ameritech stats through the half, and if you want to look at anything, I guess, Norm, you look at some good three-point shooting. The field goal for shooting overall pretty good, but the rebounding edge to Spring Valley Hall, and that might be the reason why they have the lead. Uh, no doubt about it. And you look, uh, one little edge there, I, I think, is the free throws, and the, as you mentioned, that can hurt them a little bit, but yet still, still a four-point game. Both teams are shooting pretty well, one 42%, and Hall is shooting 50%. So they're playing good basketball at this point. So what we have right now is a 16-minute or more sprint to the finish line, and Spring Valley Hall has a little bit of a head start. They want to see if they can hold on. Remember, they're trying to finish something off that they didn't get accomplished in the football season. They won the state title in 3A in 1995. They finished second last November for the 96 football playoffs. All five starters on this team are on the football team. They want to finish off as seniors with a state title. Let's go over to Yvonne. She's standing by with Spring Valley Hall coach Eric Bryant. Coach, offensively, you've been breaking them down in penetration, but you said you're a little bit unhappy with the decisions they've been making. Well, we've been, uh, we have been doing a good job of getting some nice shots down there, but, you know, there's been several possessions that we've had that we've taken shots that, you know, I haven't seen some of these guys take all year, you know, and I'm kind of like, I don't like surprises out there, so, you know, we got on them a little bit at the half about that. Uh, our defense is working hard, you know, everybody's a little bit tired, so we got to suck it up for 16 more minutes and make a little better decisions on offense. Okay, thank you. Good luck, second half, Jim. Back to you. Thank you, Yvonne. Coaches hate surprises. Oh, well, especially at this time of year, right, Norm? I tell you what, dude, he's talking about that three point is contagious, and that's exactly what he's talking about. Spring Valley Hall by four, second half coming up. We're crowning a champion in this game, but right before the second half got underway, or gets underway, St. Francis de Sales of Chicago came out and claimed their fourth place trophy. And the third place trophy claimed by University High of Normal. So congratulations to those two teams. Normal U High wins their final game of the year. And I know for St. Francis de Sales, it's not exactly a consolation to get that trophy. But uh, I'm sure as this event gets farther in their memory, they're going to look back and say, you know what, guys? We got fourth place out of the entire state. Not bad. Well, you see a set play right here by Warsaw, the back door to lob. 
And you come out right away and you get the def uh, the offense going. And they get a turnover going the other way. So now Warsaw is going to have an opportunity to tie or take the lead. And Jeff Dahl said one thing. They will play, play better defense. That's exactly what he meant. I like what Eric Bryant said. I hate surprises. <laughs> well, especially those you don't like. <laughs> Heisler with the ball, moves into the paint, dished it off. Weir made a look, goes up, couldn't get the roll. But there to finish it off and tie the game is Bob Manley. We're knotted up at 36-36. Well, a long period of rest during the halftime, uh, suddenly in favor of Warsaw right now, because they've seen the more aggressive team at this time. What a nice move, but he missed the layup. Belt kept it alive, and Manley had it in his hands for a second. It was knocked out of his arms by Joey Reed. And Reed got, picks up his third personal foul. Got the Warsaw fans now involved in the cheering and and every move that's been made. But once again, that was a good move to the hoop by Brian. It just uh, didn't make the layup. The game is tied at 36 apiece. And you got uh, the haul into the defense of uh, man to man. Heisler, this will be for the lead. Didn't get it. Sterling came away with yet another rebound. Nice little move. And yes, indeed, you got. Now Hall looking for the lead. Bryant right down the lane, dish it off. Sterling had gone to get defensive or position on the rebound, and that's what Sterling is looking at Bryant about, because Sterling had begun to make his move to get in position to rebound, and then Bryant dished off. Now Sterling, uh, along with. Well, Figgy, I mean, there was a little bit of battle going on there, knocking each other. Oh, what a move by Weir. And for the first time in the game, Warsaw has the lead. And that was a good inside move, pass low, and he has some outstanding moves down low. Outstanding moves. I guess he proved everybody he can score, and he's not soft in his league. Jepson, little runner, didn't get the roll. Rebound by Manley. Manley, there's a man open. Going down is Paul Figgy. Foul will be on Ryan Andres. Figgy along with Ryan Andres. Sterling going up the court, a set play to go. We're going at it with a couple of elbows going up the court just before the turnover on the pass. Belt will inbound. Heisler comes free. He's guarded by Bryant. Weir goes one on one, fires over Sterling, didn't hit the shot. Ball was last touched by Manley, then it was cleaned up by Jepson. Jepson brings it up the floor, dishes on the baseline. Bryant with the finish. The opening points of the second half for Hall. One of the first fast breaks you've seen this whole game. Executed perfectly with the no look pass and the layup. Nothing fancy, just a good pass in there. Tied at 38. On the move, the shot goes in and out. Rebound pulled down by Joey Reed. Hall looking to take the lead back. And they've got their composure back. It's like getting a little punch and you stagger a little bit and then you, you regroup. Heisler got, got Jepson as he took it away. Second foul on Heisler. Good call. Bryant will inbound. Difficult pass inside on the inbounds play. It works out well because Paul Figgy gets tied with another foul, his second. Yeah, that was not, like I said, 40, 50 feet away from the hoop. You don't need a foul like that. Good aggressive defense, but reaching in, coaches go crazy with that type of a surprise also. Randy Crow comes in. Paul Figgy will go out. Jeff Dahl is saying exactly that. You don't need to follow him that far away from the hoop. Yeah, there's no need. Jepson trying to get away from Crow, faked the pass, took the shot, didn't get it to go down, had the rebound in his hands for a moment, and then Weir came down with the ball. He was standing on the baseline. Ball goes out of bounds, and Bryant will inbound. Jepson gets upset when he misses. I mean, he just ticked off that. Keep an, keep an eye on Jepson on the inbounds pass. Keep an eye on him, period. He's the way he shoots. He goes to the locker room, I'm following him in there. Had it knocked away by Crow, but Crow got a little part of the arm. Second foul on Crow. So very quickly, three team fouls on Warsaw here in the second half. We're still tied at 38. Five and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. The only way you watch a guy, somebody like a, a Jepson is you have to watch him and guard him without the basketball. Put more attention on guarding him without the basketball. So once he gets it, it's like that Michael Jordan guy. It's unstoppable. And he's good. And he's, Jordan pretty, he's pretty good. He's not bad. Sean Jepson now five free throws in a row in the game. Looks like our 
himself off a little bit, doesn't he? <laughs> you got Doogie Hauser in this game. You got Alfalfa. Nice pass, Heisler jumper, and that was a soft touch. And that was a good pass, good ball movement, and a, you're right, a soft touch. Took the lip of the rim, just bounced his way right in there. Tied at 40, Hall looking for the lead. Nice pass in the cut. Sterling got a little bit too deep. He hit the side of the board, and that's going to be a travel call. No doubt. It's hustle, but it's, it's traveling. Well, there's not a moment in the game when Bob Manley doesn't hustle. Oh, man, he gives up skin. He has four burns. He has contact, body contact. And he's got those spring sting sideburns. <laughs> Jepson's open, didn't take the shot, moves in a little closer, fires it over Crow, didn't get the shot. Weir had it for a moment, Bryant kept it alive. Jepson has it back. Take the pass inside, Sterling goes for the shot. He was muscled by Weir, a little clutch and grab. The foul is going to be on Weir, that's his first personal foul. I tell you what, he made it look like a soft guy. Speaking of sideburns, Norm, we were talking about the sideburns of Bob Manley and how manly they are. You talk about your manly sideburns. Gentleman brought that card down for Norm to sign before the game. And I, by the way, on the back it says, Norm's favorite food is lobster. You get such information off bubblegum cards. Tied at 40. Had some yesterday. 4.57 remaining here in the third quarter. Let's go to Yvonne Simmons. She's hanging out by the Hall cheerleaders. Yeah, we talked about the guys all the time going to the state tournament. Carla Muntz, the cheerleader you're looking at for Hall, she has a black headband. She's been to the state tournament in volleyball two times. In track, she's a, a sprinter three times. She's going to the University of Dayton. That's the Flyers on a scholarship for volleyball as a setter. Yvonne, what a, year, what a time at Hall the class of 1997 has had. They won a football title. They finished second in football. They're trying to win a basketball title here. And mainly on the strength of Sean Jepson, who's a member of the class of 1998. He gets the bucket and he gets fouled. It's a little hang time right there, a little pump fake. You get the ball down low. Now he's going into low post position as he gets low fake. Let me bump. Let me go up. Hang. Boom. You got me. Possible three-point play right here. He's a little missing from the outside during the last few possessions in his shot. So I'm going down low to see if I can get the points, and that can get you back in rhythm. Jepson has hit seven free throws in a row in this game. Weir down low, kicked it out. Heisler trying to get free. Little running jumper. He got the shot. He didn't get the bucket, but he did get fouled. Yes, he did. So Spoonmore gets his third. Pardon me, Norm. He went to the hoop on that one to draw that foul. Now if you can can them, because that's where they've had right. any negative part right here is not hitting their free throws. Here he goes to the hoop. He got up in there and boom. Not a whole lot of contact, but enough to call the foul. As a team, Warsaw, four of eight in the opening half from the foul line. Heisler missed his only attempt in the first half, but he made that one. Two of two. Well, they keep those, they'll stay right around this game and keep it going. And if nothing else, free throws will usually keep you in. Good pick. And the foul is going to be pinned on Heisler, and that's a big one. That's number three. I don't think that should have been a call. That's a, just a good, solid pick. What did he do but go into the pick? It was a good pick, contact initiated basically by the pick person, and that being Big Sterling. I mean, what else? Why do you give him to penalize him for getting popped? Sterling is a large dude. Jumper from the corner, that goes off. Sterling got the rebound of the putback. Sterling had 17 rebounds in their sectional final victory by Hall earlier this month. I'm still a little shocked at that call right there because he gets picked, he gets his head taken off, he gets a foul call against him, and Sterling didn't budge. You don't see three pointers very often out of Weir. As a matter of fact, that's only the sixth three pointer he's attempted all season. He missed that one. And Jeff Dahl did not like that. Bryant hanging off glass, didn't get it. Jepson had the rebound knocked away, made a heads-up play, but Belt had faster hands than Jepson did. It's yes, a three-point lead for Hall. Warsaw has the ball. Heisler made a pass to Weir, turns toward the baseline, got Sterling away from him and put it in off glass. That was absolutely a beautiful move down low, and the patience that Warsaw is showing on their offense paid off on that one because they were starting to get a little tad out of control. Jepson baseline, three-point lead for Hall. And is he going to work? Now he's going inside. He went outside all first half. He missed a couple in the first opening half of this game. 
or just half, and all of a sudden, he's going inside with his game. Weir kicked it back out. Belt open for a three. That one wouldn't go. Kept alive for the moment, then pulled down by Crow. Heisler, he'll fire for three. That one off the back of the rim. Tipped up by Sterling. He just stole it away from Weir. Boy, he has a mean streak about him. Oh, yeah, he does. He just gets in there, and he's a warrior. I think he's asking for a blow, though, quite possibly. Yeah, well, he's, he's working. He's workhorse out there. And we're watching Weir and guarding him will wear you out. No pun intended. Sterling and Weir have been going at it inside. Boy, you look at Weir and you just think, well, oh, he's just a nice looking soft kid. But boy, he's a toughie. He played tough in the semifinal game, and believe me, he and Sterling have been going at it hard. Sterling wants it, didn't get it. That's a travel. Traveling. Okay, getting manly in the way. He's, a, he's their version of a Dick Buckus. 238 remaining in the third quarter. Hall leads at 47-44. Ryan Jackal comes back into the game for Warsaw. Replaces Bob Manley. Bob Manley. Oh boy. Good running for him going down there to the bench by Bob Manley. Head up, knees high. No doubt about it. Coming right straight for you. What if he's a track man? 234 to go. A three-pointer for Warsaw with tire. Heisler inside to where he's been working on Sterling and he's been spinning away from him, but that time missed the shot. Sterling hauled down the rebound. Good move, right position, but he just missed the shot. And Sterling got lost a little bit, but went to the rack and got the, the uh, rebound. Bryant on the other end, he has 12. And you know what? I'm seeing and out of this team, the Hall, some football. Yeah, I'm some seeing football, some football toughness. Right it's like I'm coming at you, I'm digging in and coming right to you. That's what I'm seeing right now. That, that was like, I'm taking this layup, and he got it. That Ben Bryant. Weir kicked it out of the block. Bell, he was fouled by Eric Bryant, and that's number three on Eric Bryant. Yeah, we mentioned all five starters for the Red Devils are football players, and I'll tell you what, by their demeanor and their toughness and the way they carry themselves, you can certainly tell because they, they just have that tough look about them. And just look at these guys. Well, I'll tell you what, what I've seen is going to the hoop. I have no outside shots, all in the paint. And it's like, I'm taking it, I'm going to the rack, I'm going to the hole, and I'm doing it. Five-point lead for Hall. Warsaw has the ball. Under two minutes from now remaining here in the third quarter. i got to find out what position Sterling played. To the rack, and we're going to get a blocking foul on the baseline, and that is going to be on Sterling, and that's two on him. Red Devils foul. There you see the replay. All right, I'm gonna go to the rack myself. You want to do it, I'll do it. He goes up, went underneath. Good call by the officials on that particular call. Bill Heisler is going to go to the line. He's two of three. Free throws absolutely critical for Warsaw. They're the team that's trailing. And it keeps them in the game. The calls are in favor of Warsaw as the game has been dictated by the aggressive play of the Hall. Get to the free throw line, you gotta make them take advantage of this. Heisler can't get the 19th point. 49-45. Hall leads it by four. And I tell you what, I won't take away any credit from Warsaw because there's some tough kids out there themselves. But you can see that football mentality that is the presence of the Hall. Foul is going to be called on Sean Jepson. That's his third personal foul. So really, here's the story now developing for Spring Valley Hall. They're starting to get some guys in some foul trouble. Jepson, his third. Adam Curran has gone to the scorer's table to check in. Let's see if he comes in and gives Jepson a blow or maybe quite possibly Sterling. He's going to go out for Jody, Joey Reed. He's got three fouls as well. I wouldn't think uh, Jepson would come out if he got two in the first two minutes no. of the game. And uh, he will pull him now because he has three. Well, he proved he's a disciplined player, Norman. Won't get into situations where he might pick up a foul. And that's something that else, uh, right? No doubt about it. And he is just a junior, and he still has the discipline about it. Dan Belt trying to get away from Bryant. Not too much touching. Bryant. Five. Oh, we got a call. It's Bryant and uh, Dan that, Belt were going at it, and Belt's going to get called for the foul. You know, let's check that's a five second five count. second call yes you see he didn't go forward that, but before he made the advancement on this particular play so the five second call you got to go forward make some effort to go to the hoop can't go lateral either you got to go forward final minute of the third quarter Bryant bounce pass inside Sterling he's wanted the ball the last two times down that's why he wanted it Sterling. 
and trying to pay back what Ware is doing to him. Yeah, because Ware has made him look a little bad the last couple times down the floor, and we get a 20-second timeout, and Belt got belted, if we say that. I, if, if he got kicked where I think, I'm telling you, I've seen more of that in this series than I have seen in a long, long time. Ryan Jacko was the victim in the semifinal game. Yeah, that's what I get for laughing at it. Let's go to Yvonne Simmons. You guys are wondering about the positions. Jefferson, we know, is quarterback, Sterling, defensive tackle, Reed is the tight end, and Bryant is the running back, just to let you know. I could see that. Sterling is a is a big dude. And tough one. Bryant got the rebound. As a matter of fact, all told in the Spring Valley Hall rostered nine football players. Well, you got a small school. And Norm, here's another thing too. These guys have both won and both lost a state title because this, so this is nothing new to them. Even though they haven't been here in basketball, they've been here in another sport. They know what it's like, I mean, they know what it takes. You know what that pressure's all about. That's why I love the small communities. You get the whole community rally around you and you got to play all the sports just to keep the programs going. They know how bad it feels when you lose in a title game, which maybe is the most important thing. And most of those type of communities keep kids out of trouble because they're all somewhere out somewhere playing sports most of the time. Three-pointer from the corner. That one was a little long. Sterling rebound, put it back up, would have counted if it had gone, but it didn't go. Three quarters in the books in the Class A title game. Spring Valley Hall continues to lead. Warsaw tied it up at one point, but right now, Hall leading by six. A packed house in Peoria seeing Spring Valley Hall lead by six, but the differential in rebounding right now is 11 in the favor of Spring Valley Hall, so there's your difference in the game. Well, I tell you what, they're putting the display of physical presence out there. Both offense and defense. Bryant baseline jumper wouldn't go. Ball loose. Jacko had a hand on it. We will get dual possession. Belt had it. And Adam Curran had a hand on it for Spring Valley Hall. The arrow favoring Warsaw. They get it. They're down by six points. Well, that rule again. But it is in favor of the defense, which I thought did their job to get a jump ball out of. Weir. Picked up on a double team by Bryant, had to get rid of it. Belt wanted it, open for a long three, that one's short. And the rebound pulled down by Weir, he goes up and put it back for two. Right. He is just one of those uncanny, you look at him and say, how is he doing it? Boy, he's working, he's working. He looks beautiful down there. Bryant, nice pass, Curran got rid of it. Jepson, nice job of being picked up by Jacko. Curran should have put that up, but he got out of there. And... Jepson, up in the air. You'll count that bucket, and he was fouled. We'll get a discussion by the officials. Let's see if they decide to count it. It will count. Yeah, he's up in the air when it blew to Wilson. We've got to count that one. Foul is on Ryan Jacko, his fourth. All right, now the whistle blows, and he's up. That's good. Well, his presence know where that bucket is. All, all good shooters know where the bucket is. Here's another look. Follow through, use the square, bank, boom. And he's pumped. He's ready. Jefferson took a look at who was defending him, kind of looked down the floor and said, okay, here I go. Most shooters that you find are not as intense as I've seen this Jepson be. Most shooters are really laid back cool and just, just play their fluent game of getting the shot. But he's intense. That's what you get. He's a quarterback also. It's a seven-point lead. Warsaw, they need points. 6.53 remaining behind the back dribble, and the shot will not, should not count. Good move behind the back, which he uses quite a bit. Foul is on Mike Spoonmore. That's number four. On Show him. and tell. Take it around his back to the hoop. Foul call before the shot. Team foul number seven. It's a penalty. One plus the bonus. Now you got to make these that stay somewhat close. Matt Froman into the game for Warsaw. Because you're getting a danger point of spreading this out. And a lot of emotion and fan will take over in this particular case if what the hill keeps the hall, I should say, keeps this lead spreading now. You got the 650 mark. Heisler had 30 points in the quarterfinal victory last night, 22 in the semis earlier today, 19 in this game tonight. And that's what keeps you close. Five point lead. You got to keep it close with those free throws and hope you get a little run in. Here comes Brian again. Spoonmore picked up his dribble. Now here's Jepson, guarded by Dan Bell. I'll tell you what, some of his offenses are suffering because of the fact that he's this guy. My goodness, what a great show. move. He's putting on the show. He is putting on the show. 
33 in the game. At some point you had to start double teaming him. Froman for three, that's off. Well, he might as well get it. He might get an assist on that one. It was so far off. Was that a pass? Where is 20 in the game? I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to say Jeffs is going to make the all tournament team, no matter whether his team wins this game or not. It's just a guess on my part. Jepson on belt, breaking him down, goes one on one, dished off. Bryant, three pointer on the way is good. Spring Valley all leads by eight, 59 51. And they got that outside shot working all of a sudden after they went inside a number of times. And I tell you what, they're showing the more positive, aggressive approach to the hoop. And well, my goodness, he's tough. Where would you be without him? This guy has been unbelievable. He's played bigger, stronger people in the semis and here in the finals, and he is giving no quarter. And a steal at midcourt by Heisler. He has Bryant to beat, and he does. Yeah, big steal. That is a big steal. That keeps it, takes the momentum out of the hands of Hall right now. Makes well, it we'll, a little we'll game. Come down, because here's a break coming right here. Bryant, boy, he can move it up the floor, and absolutely hammered by Froman was Adam Curran. And if you watch that play again, I don't know if he was hammered as much as he got ball. The ball was forced back in this gentleman's face. Watch this break. And I tell you, Brian comes right back after losing the ball pass and up, and the ball more did more of the damage than the foul itself. Look at this pass. He's determined. Boom. This was ball that was pushed back in the face. Got him on the elbow. Well, got him, got him with the elbow. But I tell you what, wasn't as bad of a foul as it was indicated that, but Brian came right back on a fast break. Boom. Perk. Nice bounce pass. Something that was fundamentally sound, which I like. Nothing fancy, just a bounce pass. And you got results at the free throw line. Curran, 44% from the foul line, knocks down one of two. Timeout called by Spring Valley Hall. Both teams intense, playing a great game with 520 left. And it's a five point lead for Spring Valley Hall. Spring Valley Hall leads it by five. We have seen an absolute clinic by Sean Jepson. Here he breaks down Dan Belt. It's a tough assignment. He kicked off a nice pass to his teammate Brian, who's the only senior in the starting lineup. His, this team, the Hall, has 40 starters back. Now remember, the fouls are beginning to mount a little bit, and that's the foul trouble for Warsaw. Jacko with four. Spoonmore, the only one with four for Spring Valley Hall. Warsaw finding themselves down by five. Dan Belt kicked it out. Jacko to the baseline, stop, bounce, pass, a little hot to handle, turnover on Warsaw. Well, Norman, he takes that up in a very aggressive manner, but he didn't. Decided to pass, get that far low to the hoop. You got to go up with it. Possession arrow favors Hall Township. Hall has the ball. Bryant lost the handle. Jacko came up with it, had it slapped away, and that's going to be number three on Adam Curran. And they go to the free throw line to get themselves back in this game. Cut it down to a three-point game if he makes the free throws. And I, I said this yesterday with no, no comas uh, when they played against us. They hang in there, what's all, and they, that's a danger point when you're playing well yourself and the opposition is hanging in there like Warsaw is right now. Very dangerous. Jacko, the sophomore, three of five from the foul line now. And you see the Warsaw fans nodding in approval. He needs this one here. You keep the game close, and if someone gets on one of those streaks and hot, and things go your way, and it's crucial because you, your clock's winding now. We've got a three-point game. 60-57 Hall leads. Backdoor, beautiful. Jepson hangs off glass. That wouldn't go. Weir's lucky he didn't get called for a foul. Jacko got the rebound. A three-pointer will tie it for you Warsaw. Numbers. You got numbers. Ah, he lost the handle. He had a break going for a minute. Boy, Heisler was open, and he wanted the ball. Now he gets it, and he's fouled. Call is going to go on Adam Curran. That's number four. Tough play. Good hustle. He got belted. And if everybody's hustling, that's what this play is about. He's going for the ball, and he did put the linebacker squeeze on him. That's called don't come in the middle. Coming back in, Mike Spoonmore. He's playing now with four fouls. Curran goes to the bench with his four. Heisler on the line. It's just what I noticed with this basketball team. Oh, it's just they have the football edge, man. Everybody looks like, I don't like you, I'm coming to beat you up, or whatever it is. But they're just hustling tough physical ball, and I don't mean anything in a negative way about that. I love that kind of ball. Let's go for it. <laughs> it's 
Sterling just gave a little shot to Heisler coming up the floor. I'm Get here. out of my way. I got I, I got to go somewhere. This here. is my territory. <laughs> Two point lead for Hall. They have the ball. 419 remaining in the fourth quarter. Jepson. Entry pass to Reed. He'll turn. He'll fire. He was fouled. And that call will go against Weir. That's his second. Oh, he looks like the nice kid on the block, but what a tough one. He showed something in that semifinal bruises up and down his arm. I'm telling you, St. Francis. He's been through. Yeah, he showed me something. Come in with that red ball. He's soft. He's not going to be big in the tournament. And yeah, shut him up quickly. You know what, Norm? I wonder what kind of weight room they have at Hall. Because <laughs> these guys spent a lot of time in there. Look at these, look at these dudes. They're all juniors, remember that? They look like the type of outside. Pick up big stones and left weightlifting. Ball in a pretty place. All right. After Reed's missed free throw, the ball goes out of bounds. Hall will keep it. They lead by three. 4-10 left. Just decide who's the state champion in the division A league. Let's see what Jepson decides to do. He's been a little quiet lately. Gets a screen from Sterling. Belt got picked off. Weir switch. Picked up Jepson. He went to the rack. Got his own rebound. Puts it back up and in. He's fouled. He'll go to the line for a three-point play. Weir can't believe it. That's his third. And a good play by Dan Belt. Quickly grabs Weir and says, look, the decision's been made. Keep your mouth shut and get away from the official. Now look at this. Just second effort put here. He goes up and then he'll develop his own shots. Rebound. Have you seen more three-point plays by anyone by way of not out on the arc, by way of shooting and getting fouled? Spoke too soon, but man, this young man, Jepson. First free throw in nine attempts that he's missed. He's got 35 points in the game. Is that all? Big play playing the big game. Three pointer by Heisler. That was from Chicago. That was a big, big three point play right there. Fifth three pointer in the game for Heisler. And that was downtown Chicago. That wasn't even near Peoria. To the baseline, Jepson off glass. He'll go to the line again for a three point opportunity. I'm telling you, I don't mean to laugh at him, but this young man is just not getting a break when it comes to the fouls. That's five on Ryan Jacko. Right, watch this. He's there, not position. So, I mean, the call was good. Don't get me wrong. But boy, he's just not getting a break with the way he feels about this game. And this this young man just is fired they're up. They're gonna hurt each other if they're not careful. Yeah, no, they're not the football, baby. <laughs> this is what it's all about. Now, in case you're wondering why Norm Van Leer knows so much about high school football, just so happens that Mr. Van Leer was a pretty darn good high school quarterback, I am told. True or false, Norm? That's what someone said. <laughs> I've been more proud of playing defensive back my first couple years than I was playing quarterback in my senior year. Is that what uh, man, honestly man, taught me the footwork, the toughness to play the game of basketball? And Jacko goes out of the game. Yes, tough break for this young man fouling out with four points. And look, this Simon of watching this Jeff is just, just a tough one. You're going to have to bring in Scotty Pippen, Michael Jordan, to stop this guy tonight. And they might not even be able to do I, it. I, I hear you. Not as pumped up as this kid is. Five point lead right now for Hall. Warsaw has the ball. And still a close game. I don't care how what's going on. Close game still going on. Foul away from the ball in the neighborhood. And saying who me was jo Joey Reed. Joey Reed's fourth. What a good ball game it is. That's why it's the state championship. No matter what the outcome with uh, this game, the respective towns and communities have to be proud of their teams in their high school. Rare missed the first, the front end of a two free throws. And he has 38, Jim. Missed both of those. That one goes off for Weir. So Jepson. Coming into this tournament, the individual record for points in a title game, 36 by Brent Breed of Triton. That was for Fair. That was for a Trenton against Fairbury in 1990. Well, yeah, 38. Jepson is 38 in the game, so he's got a state record for a title game in Class A. Manly, Manly, and Brian going at it. Underneath, good look. That one wouldn't go. Pulled down on the rebound by Weir. What?
Wasn't quite ready for that one. Wasn't quite ready. Good pass. Count the bucket. Look at the foul and a three-point opportunity coming up for Dan Belt. Now, if you get him involved in the offense, if he can pick up some slack a little bit, now you're going down the stretch run with another threat of the big three. Because he's been relatively quiet because he's had some duties to watch. You see the move? Boom, the ball's up. Pop, he's popped. And you can count it. Now, one record that uh, Jepson still might be able to get, the overall record for points in a title game held by Marcus Liberty of King in 1987 got 41. That's the first free throw Weir's hit in the game. It's a two-point lead for Hall. Is that the first opportunity he's had? No, he's been to the line four previous times. And we get another five-second call. That's a big call because now Warsaw can tie it with a two. That was a big call right there. If nothing else, I thought it might have been either a charge or a block, but... And speaking of state records, Heisler needs one more three-pointer to set the Class A title game record for threes in a game. He's already got five. Weir, baseline, ran out of room. Belt, puts it up. That's for a tie. Didn't get it, but he'll be able to earn it from the line. The foul's going to be on Eric Bryant. That's his fourth personal foul. Boy, it's going down the stretch run here, and I tell you about the Warsaw basketball team. They have the guts of the He-Man, I'm telling you, because they have just hung in there and stayed tough, kept it close. An outstanding performance by Jepson, but it hasn't bothered his team. They're just clinging there, whatever it takes to get this team going. I can tell you how Jeff Dahl has done that. It's a ball game, buddy. Dan Bell has now made 19 consecutive free throws. And this is the biggest one of them all because this is the tie. Didn't go. Rebound pulled down by Sterling. So Belt's free throw streak ends at 19. What a nice little run. But, uh, like I said, everything amplifies now by way of mistakes, turnovers, anything like that. Any calls, anything the referee calls you may think is not yours. It's big time now. That's to, well, that's to get within one of Marcus Liberty. He does. Oh, awesome. Crunch time. 40 points in the game for Jepson. What a show. What a show both teams are putting on there. Three-point lead for the Red Devils. All right, that was a big-time shot right there, buddy. Minute and a half left. Manley got rid of it. On the baseline, Heisler hit the side of the backboard. Good help on the defense by Sterling coming over to alter that shot right there and to hit the side of the backboard. Good possession. Big-time possession right here. Yes, this could be the possession of the game. That's the man you give it to. Jepson has 40 in the game. The title game record overall, 41 by Marcus Liberty in a double-A game. They're in their stall right now. They're in the stall right now. Jepson's an 82% free throw shooter. He's fouled by Dan Belt. I think at this particular time, not bad foul. You got to go after it. They seem to be satisfied with what they have by way of a lead and held the ball up there with a minute, four seconds with a three-point lead. And you put one of the hottest ball players in the state on the free throw line at this point. We're going to get a timeout called with 104 remaining. What a ball game. Timeout called by Warsaw. They're trailing by three. Each team has three timeouts left. Possession arrow favors all touchdowns. Yes, indeed. What a ball game we have on our hands right here. Both teams have to get the, their final instructions, or not final, but some instructions to see how they're counter this after the free throws are made with the three-point lead. Could very well be a five-point game, Jim, after this. Jepson, 14 of 21 from the field. That's not bad. 67%, and folks, he's not a postman playing in there taking two and three-foot shots. He's been firing from the outside. And he's been very smart in his... Uh, Adjustment to when he's not hitting the outside shots. When he did get a little red, he went to the hoop, and no one stopped him. He racked up three-point plays, one after another, going inside. Jepson on the line. He's got 40 points in the game. 
The title game record for either class once again is held by Marcus Liberty. It's 41 points. You just may see that broken tonight. Especially if you maintain a lead and you get it in the ball handler's hand such as he is, Jetson. He has got to foul it. He has long since passed the A title game record. You know what? It'd be interesting to find out too is what the record for this building is. Uh, Percy Hawkins played here. I'm sure he piled up a few in his day. No doubt about it. Spectators are requested to remain seated for the presentation. We're not quite out of time for the timeout yet, so we'll hold it up here for a second. That's how anxious these teams are ready to play. They're out there on the court. They're ready to go. Jepson, nine of ten from the foul line. Well, this is a big uh, set of free throws here. Jepson ties Marcus Liberty. Not only that, he's 23 out of his last 25 free throws over the last two games. This is to set a state title game record, and he got it. 42 points for Sean Jepson. He dumps Marcus Liberty into second place. Right to the future opponents. He's just a junior. One minute, one, one minute left. It's a five-point lead for Hall. Sterling claims he went straight in the air. Reed is trying to help him out by claiming he got the foul as well. Let's see who indeed is tagged. Well, you see the replay going in, and I'm not so sure he didn't stand there and hold his ground. And Reed is gone, tagging. Norm. And I'm telling you, that, that's one of the toughest calls that the officials in. You stay on your ground, you're taught to play defense, and put your hands up, as you see in the hall thing, and then Belt comes in, initiates the contact, and the call is on the hall. Reed will go out with three points. If that's the way the game goes. Now you got to make these free throws and come up with some type of defense because here on out, I do believe you have to start fouling just to stay around because there's no shot clock to right. offset the fact that you can get the ball back. But the free throws are absolutely critical. Belt three of four in the game. You need them. Some good free throw shooting basketball squads as a whole, especially down the stretch run. We've seen some clutch shooting. Belt's made 20 of his last 21 free throws. Boy. That he's been a clutch. big foul manly a big foul by manly but I tell you what why waste time on the clock right this is not a bad situation 55.8 seconds you didn't take a tick off the clock and you're gonna have to foul anyway in my opinion to get this going you can't sit around and wait for this situation because there's no shot clock well you just shot and just threw him down and take down in the wrestling department and there Manly had to be a wrestler in his school. And, and here's the thing. Sterling is a 52% free throw shooter. And remember, you've got Jepson out there. Who's going to get the ball in an inbounds pass? No doubt Jepson. about it. So Manly, a heads-up play, puts one of the 50-50 free throw shooters on the line for Spring Valley Hall. Right now, it's a three-point game, 55 seconds remaining. I would be curious to know if that was out of design or the fact that you're just being aggressive. Well, somebody's on top of it, whether it's Manley or Jeff Dahl. Sterling is now two of three in the game. Means nothing if you miss this and they get the rebound again. You've and got to get the rebound and come back. you got a possible uh, tie coming in your hands here. Sterling missed both. A three-pointer would tie it. But remember, they've got enough time. They don't necessarily need a three here. They need a good shot is what they need. Belt pulls up foul line. That one went in and out. Where with a big oh. rebound. It just wouldn't go down for him. He was hacked on the arm. Well, you got to make both free throws and foul right away again. There's just no doubt about it. Derek Baird picked up the foul. That's his second. Oh, Greg Weir so will go so to close. the line. He is one of five from the line in the game. For as wonderful as Craig Weir has been here in Peoria this weekend. The coach has made a good point to his, uh, to his son right now. He's, you're out there trying to steal the ball, and you're allowed the penetration. And that was a good point he brought up to Eric Bryant. Well, that's a big miss, Jim. It's a huge miss. He really needs this one, too. Got it. Now they got it. still at the foul because this team will hold the ball. They need to foul before they get to Jepson, too. They couldn't get to Sterling. They did get to Bear. The yeah. foul will be on Bill Heisler, and that's four on Heisler. Even in the situation, well, he makes both, and you're on up four points here, but you got to hope to miss both or miss one. Take one and still have an opportunity to tie this game. Derek Baird, a 76% free throw shooter. That's not bad. No, it's not bad. But you're late in the game in the state Class A final. It's a little bit different situation than just going to the line after practice. No doubt about it. Oh, 
at least it would seem that way to most people. It didn't seem that way the way Derek Baird shot that one. No, but look, if you got the mentality of the football attitude that you have, that doesn't bother you. You're going to go up there, hit or miss, you're going up there with a frame of mind in a positive way. And that's the way I look at this team, and I keep rephrasing to that because there is a different mentality and your confidence on that football level, and you bring it to the basketball court. 40.7 seconds remaining. Hall leading Warsaw by three. Plus the experience of being there before, Jim, I really feel that you're right. In football, yes. Yes, indeed. And they have that touch, be it another sport or not. It just wraps and deals with the community of how they feel about the, their situation. Before we get on out of here, we want to take some time and thank the people who have been helping Norm and I all weekend. And we'll name them off because they're great people. Dave Turner and Tim Sutton, our associate producers, Doug Stanton and Matt Luke, and the production manager at Sports Channel, Sheila Brown. Jim Corno Jr. with a wonderful job in the pregame show and all the guys from Trio Video Chicago. Thanks for all your help. Bruce, the stats man, way to go, my friend. We want to thank the IHSA for being our host here in Peoria and a big thank you especially to all the people here at the Civic Center in Peoria and everybody in the community of Peoria. They do a wonderful job of staging the tournament and they are certainly the most gracious hosts in the world. And we'll see you again next weekend, Peoria. No doubt about it. And our, our social director, of events after game, Matt Luke. Matt Luke. <laughs> he knows all the spots in Peoria, doesn't he? <laughs> Every single spot. He definitely knows the spot. Matthew Back. Luke. <laughs> Back to the matter at hand. Baird on the free throw line. It's a three point lead for Hall. This is a tremendous big tap situation on this free throw. Rattled in and out. Weir got the rebound. Heisler is the three point shooter on the floor. They might go for a two and try and come back down and get one more possession. Belt, bounce pass inside, dangerous play, but it worked. Weir, turn around. He got the bucket and he was fouled. He can tie the game from the line. The foul is on Sterling. That's number four on him. Oh, that's a tough call, but boy, what a nice play by what's Who else deserves to have an opportunity to get it? Here's a replay. Oh, look at a pass that was in there. A little bump before. Boy. Tough call, but it was made. Now we'll see if we tie it up. What a game. What a game. Talking about pressure. We're two of seven from the line. Missed it. Rebound goes to Mike Spoonmore of Spring Valley Hall. Got a foul. You got a foul. But That's not the guy you want to foul, but no. they have no choice. See, Heisler has four. If he gets tagged for the foul, he's gone. The so foul is on Dan second. Belt. That's his third. I think that's why he hesitated to foul him when he had the ball the first time down there. He laid off until Belt can come along and get the foul. Boy. And asked for a better championship game than this. Sean Jepson adds to his point total. He is our Wendy's player of the game, 43 points, a new IHSA record for points in a title game in either class. Jepson with 44. Now here's the game right here. Three point lead. Heisler is the man to watch. Good Jeff Dow wants a timeout. Good call. Got it. Heisler has already hit five three pointers in this game. If he hits a three pointer to tie it, it would not only knock the score at 73 apiece, but it would also tie the record for most three-pointers in a title game held by Brandon Hughes of Peoria Manual set two years ago against Carbondale. The A record has already been tied by Heisler. That now co-held with Joe Mann of Aurora Christian. He set that in 1995. Now, if you were with us for the, se for the semifinal game between Warsaw and St. Francis de Sales, we saw Heisler not only hit a three at the buzzer, but he hit it from long distance. Let's go back to the, the semifinal game earlier today. This thing was on the money from half court. Nothing but net. Well, he, he's going to need one a little closer now. Someone's going to have to hit one. 15 seconds remaining in regulation. Hall leads it by three, but Warsaw has the ball. There's the man. He's hit 77 three-pointers this season, but don't discount Dan Belt. He has a three in this game. He's got 48 for the season. 
Warsaw needs that seventh three-pointer. Well, no Norm, can you, you go? Can you go for a quick two and then foul? You, any way you can get it, you go for it. Manley to inbound. Here comes Heisler. Didn't get free. Dan Belt has the ball. He can shoot the threes as well. Weir will set a screen. Heisler, that's for the tie. Got it! Oh, tremendous play. Tremendous play. Jepson at the buzzer. That oh boy, was that close. Oh. Tremendous basketball, tremendous clutch play, and that play was designed off the bat, and he hit it big time again. There big are time. 30 players wearing uniforms in this game. All 30 of them are playing their best game in this one. We're tied at 73. We'll play at least four minutes more in the Class A title game. The last time there was overtime in the single A title game was 1990 when Trenton Westland defeated Fairbury Prairie Central 83-78. And these two teams deserve to play overtime. They have played hard. They have played quality basketball. And I said, Norm, we might as well play the first guy to 100. It may turn out that way. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, neither team deserves to lose. Let's put it that way. Somebody is going to go home very disappointed. Both teams will go home knowing they gave it their all. No doubt about that. That's why they're here. That is exactly why they're here in this championship game. We have seen two state records for the title game set in this contest. Jepson for points and Heisler for three-pointers in a game. And deservingly so, both teams. And right now, the man-to-man -man has still been played by Warsaw. Now you pick and choose your offense right here. Jumper on the way by Bryant. That's good. Hall strikes first. They lead by two. They're very aggressive in their approach. I'll tell you that. Nice jumper. Just dribbled around and got to open and bow, he hit it. We've got a lot of people in foul trouble too. That's another thing we'll have to keep track of here in overtime. Weir, baseline, Sterling really couldn't do a whole lot because he's one of the people playing with four fouls. You can't get any better basketball than this. Some clutch shooting and answering points and Warsaw just hanging around, just countering whatever it takes to get back in the ball game. Man, what a game. Baseline jumper, Jepson will be a little short. Froman got the rebound and somehow got it to Dan Belt. He took it away from Jepson. Jepson took it back. Jepson gets called for a foul. That's number four on Jepson. There was a bunch of action in that sequence of rebounding that I've never seen. Rebound, lost ball. Here he got knocked down. Guys falling down. Get it to his teammate. The awareness where his teammate is. Look at this. Watch this falling down that here. I get the ball. I'm falling down. Where's my teammate? I got it to you. Back over. I'm ready for it. Bounce out. Here we go. Then you push me. I got to call a foul. That's action. That's action, buddy. Man, talk to me. I'm intense here. Dan Belt, five of six at the line. Uh -huh. Warsaw leads it by one. When's the last time they had to lead in this game? No, Norm, I don't think they ever did. They tied it in the third quarter, but they've never had the lead. You want to go out as a high schooler in your final game of the year playing as well as you can. I think they had to lead at one point to 38-36 very early in this game. Then it was tied up 38-38 uh, all, and that's been it until this point. Jepson baseline, couldn't lose Belt. Stays with the dribble, wants to break him down. Goes baseline, got a partial screen. Good defense by Belt, give him credit. He's Weird two, he slid over to help out. Jepson fires, little short. Ball goes out of bounds. Also, it was saved by Jepson, but we came up with got it. numbers down there if we can look up. All right, they're holding it up. Froman waits for everybody to catch up. Ooh, Ooh dangerous pass. Warsaw leads it by two. 207 left. Weir, jumper, good. Oh boy, Warsaw's on a roll right now. 30 Warsaw's points in the game for Weir. Someone else, someone else has to step up and hit shots for the hall right now. Bryant, tough pass in the baseline. And we get a whistle. Belt goes down. Tough call on that one. And where's two for two in the overtime as he's just getting set up by his teammates. Tough call right there, but it was a reach in. You got to give it to him. Belt uh, reached in, and here's a tough free throw to call, Jim. Third foul on Belt, Norm. Adam Curran on the line. He had two clutch free throws late in regulation. He only hit one of two. He oh. has a chance to redeem himself here. That didn't look good from the minute he left his hand. And let me tell you, he's in there strictly for defense. 
Derek Baird will check in. Now, one of the reasons why possibly is because Baird's a good free throw shooter. One of the other reasons why Nick Sterling just needs to come over and get a little bit of rest. He's trying to keep up with Ware. I can understand that because Ware has just been on a tear. And like I mentioned before, two for two in the overtime. And, and you look at Ware and you just think, okay, how, how can this guy play these big guys tough? A little bit slight of build, but man, is he a tiger? He reminds me, I told you before, the program slips in my mind, one of those old black and white movies. Andy goes to college wearing a raccoon cap and hat. You saw Curran hang his head when he hit the second free throw. He knows that he really needed to hit both. He hit one out of two. 150 remaining in the first overtime. Warsaw leads it by three. And the way they can play and shoot the ball, there's plenty of time in this game. Plenty of time. But the one thing you keep uh, mentioning is the fact that there's foul trouble in all both squads. When you play this long and play that tough and aggressive, you're going to have fouls. Bryant has four for Hall. Jepson has four for Hall. Curran has four. Spoonmore with four. Nick Sterling with four as well. On the other side, for Warsaw, Bill Heisler has four. Weir has three, and Jacko has already fouled out of the game. And then you got to remember, uh, at this particular point, uh, you, you look at Warsaw with two timeouts, Hall with three left, and the most important thing right now, if you get in a scrap and the ball's loose, the arrow points to Warsaw. Right. Get down with those stats over there, buddy. All right. Beautiful. I'm hyped. I'm ready to play another overtime. Norm's, Norm's ready to suit up. I love this. But one of the things that has made this game so enjoyable, Norm, is how hard these guys have played. That is the only way. And remember, they played this morning. They've got to be absolutely gassed and running on pure adrenaline. And we just have not seen any drop off in the play. No, and I tell you before, sometimes it's not the championship that's so important. It's how you got there and the work ethics and the methods of getting there to make your champion is just as important as being a champion. Heisler all alone for the bucket. Bob Manley, he only has five in the game, but those two points may be the biggest in Hall's basketball season as they try to stay alive. Bryant couldn't hit the three. Jepson with the rebound. He'll turn. Got Weir in the air. Wouldn't go down. That's going to be number four on Craig Weir. That press backfired a little bit on the, the approach that Hall put because Warsaw handled the press and got a layup for Manley, the tough one. There you can see right here, Jepson stepped in. I'll tell you what, guy could create a three-point shot for himself. It's unreal. And he did miss that goal to get the opportunity to hit the three-point, so he got two. He has three free throws to go. Jepson doing some damage from the foul line. That's the 16th attempt he's made. 16th attempt he's had. He's made 15 of them. Three-point lead, and now. As we saw in the end of regulation, it was Warsaw that had to foul and extend the game. Now it's Spring Valley Hall that has to do so. That's five on Eric Bryant. And he is going to finish his final game as a senior, hoping the underclassmen can send him out as a state champion. Yes, because he is the only senior in his starting lineup on this basketball team for the Hall, which they have six seniors on the whole to the roster or five seniors I should say and that's the son dad and son that's not a coach you just saw that was a dad yep hey it's not over get the head up played well Brian is not disappointed Norm I don't think about fouling out of the game he's he knows it's the last time he'll ever walk ever walk off the floor in high school basketball that's the emotion he's feeling right now I can understand that I certainly understand that there's well, nothing worse than being a spectator if you're a competitor. That's why I like this level ball, but there's plenty of time left in this game. Plenty of time. Four-point lead for Warsaw. Jepson has the ball. Look how calm Jepson is. Goes between four players, had it knocked away. Remember, the arrow was facing in favor of Warsaw. Jump ball, and the arrow goes that way. Still like to have the jump ball aspect in this game when it comes to that. Even though the arrow's in favor of the defense this particular time, so often it happens when you bust and hustle, it goes in favor of the offense. 20 belt, 42 high throw are the best free throw shooters. Let's see where the ball goes. They better get it in and knocked out of bounds by Jepson. He's everywhere. Still calm. He's playing hard, but he's calm. Yeah, he's in the control. I still say someone else is going to have to pick up the offense. 
Froman needs to get it in bounds. That was tipped out of bounds that time by Spoonmore. 114 remaining. Warsaw leading by four. They're Where? having fits inbounding the ball. Where it was wide open. No, oh, I didn't give it to him. Well, they want to get it to the better foul shooters, Norm. Heisler is one of them. He has the ball, and he was fouled by David Sharp. Yeah, sometimes you just better get it in. And the way Ware's playing is positive that he's been for this team. He's not a bad man to go to. Maybe ball having skills, but get it in, get there, and go get the ball. Now, coaching move by Eric Bryant. With the free throw coming up, he needs rebounding. He gets Sterling back in there. He also sends in Ryan Andres, who happens to be a 36% three-point shooter. Bryant is the second best free three point shooter on the team, but he's on the bench, so that's why Andres is in there. Well, I tell you this, I don't know what these ball players over Warsaw play football on that. But you're talking about poise and maintaining their cool, whatever their approach is, it's been a beautiful thing for them also. Well, I'll tell you what, Norm, some of the toughest athletes you'll ever find are the cross country runners, and Heisler is one of them. And Weir is another, and the reason why I say that is because that's the sport I competed in. Well, you got to have endurance and longevity in that one. And you're out there alone, baby. You better have it. You hit one or two free throws with a five-point lead, and we're getting down to the under the minute mark in another four seconds here. They screened out Andres for a three. He didn't get the ball. Jepson can fire threes as well. He'll put it up. That one's going to be short. Out of bounds, and last touched by one of the Red Devils. The ball will go back to Warsaw. 57 seconds remaining. It's a five-point lead. There's still time. There's still time. Don't celebrate yet. Belt, nice catch. Did a good job of avoiding Sterling. Yes, Manley wants did. to get rid of it. Belt an outside the skill foul. right there, Jim. They avoid the charge and get the ball to Manley and then go get it back to get fouled because he's a better free throw shooter than Manley. And Manley was wise enough to say, hey, I don't want to shoot. Take the ball back. And I tell you what, the turning point of this game, if indeed Warsaw wins, is the foul that Manley took underneath the bucket. Quickly. To quickly get Because back in he the game. fouled the right player. He fouled Sterling instead of letting Jepson get the ball. That was a big, big turnabout, and Manley was wise enough. Whether it was a coaching uh, point out to, to do this or just took it upon himself to do it, it was still a big, big, big play. It's a seven point lead for Warsaw. 50 seconds left. Jepson wants to spot up for a three. Had Heisler all over him. Andres, he couldn't squeeze the three off. That's a three point jumper on the way. Won't go. Batted around. Rebound by Heisler. He's going to wait for somebody to foul him. Oh, good ball handling. Good ball handling. Fouled by Spoonmore. He's done. It is a shame to see anyone lose this game. And Warsaw, man, it's giving me goosebumps. It's giving me goosebumps to see this type of ball playing. And it just may be one of those years where you just go to the well and it's season, be it football, be it basketball, you're there, but you just don't come away with the cup. Spoonmore, another senior. And if indeed you hit these two free throws, it's going to be awfully tough for any type of comeback by the Hall. Heisler now with 31 points in the game. What a game. Heisler now with 32. The big three for Warsaw have combined for over 70 points in this game. Hendricks. And that's why they're the big three. Definitely the big three. 27.2 left. Warsaw, they're feeling comfortable, but they'll feel more comfortable when it's over. End of regulation. But I tell you what, there's only two field goals. Second field goal in overtime by the Hall. I mean, they only got two field goals in the second in the overtime. Well, only if it two. turns right. out that Warsaw gets this victory, it's going to be a great comeback. Belt's going to go to the line. The foul will be on Denny Goletti. There is no doubt there's a great comeback because all the, the, the poise and the, and the aggressive play and everything was just happening. But I told you earlier, 
But Warsaw just hangs around, and that's a dangerous sign. When you're playing, you got someone scoring 40 odd points against you, and you're hanging around still in the ball game. That's a big, big, big time situation for you. Sometimes the anticipation is almost better than actually winning it. Boy, Dan Belt has been virtually automatic from the foul line here in Peoria. A nine point lead. Jepson looking for more. He'll go down the lane and take what was given to him. Sean Jepson. Quick foul, not quite. Nearly a steal. Not a foul. Man. He almost lost it. He almost carried it, but he got away with that and then the foul. Derek Barrett's third. 13.7 seconds remaining. Well, I'll tell you what. The big three. That's 80 points. 80 of the 89 points by Warsaw scored by the big three. They were averaging 57 a game coming into this contest. And I tell you, who came up and picked it up and down the stretch run. Besides high school, is the fact that Belt got involved and in not only defensively, but hit some tremendous free throws down the stretch run here to pick that up. You know of where you speak, Norm, because Belt in overtime has hit seven of eight free throws. No doubt about it. You're the ball player. You're the ball handler. You're the man. You got to step up big time. And that sign of a great and a good ball handler for your team is that you have to go down the stretch run hitting free throws because you're the one with the basketball for ball handling purposes. But you're the one, if you got a lead, that's going to get fouled. And you've got to go up and make those. Eight point lead. Nine seconds remaining. Jepson trying for one more, and he got it. Jepson adds to his state final record. And then Baird commits the foul. Now some people normal say, why are they fouling? This game is over, they're out of it. Man, you don't stop until that gun goes off. You never off. know what can happen. You can get an unnecessary technical foul, a rough play, a three-point play, anything. You never know. That's why you never give up. And like I said before, it's not winning the championship all the time as much as it is how you got there, what kind of character you build, your work uh, performance and how you handle those type of things along the road to success. It's a disappointing night for Spring Valley Hall, but once again, listen to what the class of 1997 has accomplished. Champions in 3A football 95, second in 3A football 96. Their volleyball team went to the Elite Eight the last two years. What a run it's been for them. Replacing Sean Jepson. Sean Jepson, an all-time championship game record tonight. He'll go to the bench. And the record really doesn't matter to him, unfortunately. But his name will be in the record book, and it'll be there for a long, long time. Outstanding performance. Outstanding performance. It'll take a while, but he'll look back on it, and he'll be proud of it. That's what it's all about. Show a little emotion, and nothing wrong with that. Builds character. The reason why it hurts so much is because it matters so much. That's the bottom line. That is the bottom line. That's why these games are so... Jepson leaves with 51 points. Well, in the end, the cross-country runners had better long-distance capability than the football players. Hall wins the Class A state title. Hall loses the Class A state title. After being on top late in regulation, Warsaw wins at 92-85. A very tough loss for Hall. But I tell you what, a very impressive win for Warsaw. Very impressive in their comeback, their staying power. And I tell you what, I'm very impressed with the Jeff Dahl and his frame of mind and with how he has his team prepared to play. And I'll tell you, I was most impressive in their win over St. Francis to get here. But just as much as I'm impressed as his victory here for the state championship. The presentation of the trophy. There'll be a final show outside by Zambelli. We'll have the trophy presentations for the number one and number two teams in the state coming up after this timeout. 92-85, the final Warsaw pours it on in overtime and wins their first state title in basketball. Warsaw will not only go home with the state trophy, they'll go home with the respect that they wanted coming here to Peoria. They win at 92-85. Time now for our Pepsi play of the game. And Bill Heisler hit this three-pointer to send the game into overtime. And that is our Pepsi play of the game. 
Boy, you gotta stick with him for a long, long, long time. Six three pointers in the title game. Tied the record held by Brandon Cole. And one of the things that the tournament did when it came here to Peoria is it's quite an elaborate presentation ceremony here at the end of the game at Carver Arena. And to me, this is the hardest thing, Norm, about losing this game is standing there and watching the other guys get the trophy. But oftentimes, how you conduct yourself as the second place team when this goes on is how you'll be remembered. And also, in both parties, how you conduct yourself as a winner. I think it, it, it builds character. This is not bad to go through when you're young and you're growing up. So that's what it's all about, Jim, as far as I'm concerned. Of America's original March Madness. Presenting the medallions will be members of the IHSA Board of Directors attending night's game. They are Vice President William Wright of Savannah, Division 4, Secretary Greg Bradley of Mount Zion, Division 5, Gary Collins of Monmouth, Division 6, and Patrick Sullivan of Roxana, Division 7. At this time, please meet the Red Devils Spring Hall Township High School, who finished 97 second in the state with a record of 27 and 6. Meet the principal of Hall Township, Mrs. Patty Lunn. Athletic director, Gary Vicini. Head coach, Eric Bryant. Assistant coach, Bruce Becker. Assistant coach, Keith Buchin. Assistant coach, Tom Keegan. And now the Red Devils, Eric Bryant. Craig Olson. And Eric Bryant, once again, David the tears Sharp. you see him shedding are because he knows his high school career is over. Sure. David Sharp, another senior, knows he'll never put on the Red Devil basketball uniform Sean again. Jepson. Sean Jepson ended up with 51 points, a new championship game record for both classes. Danny Delaney. Chris Piante. Derek Bear. Joey Reed. Adam Curran. Curran will be back Mike next year. Spoonmore. Spoonmore a senior. This is it for him. Kevin Wilson. Now, Ben Bernardi's an interesting story. He's a senior who didn't play a lot. He dislocated his shoulder earlier in the year. He had surgery, and he came back to practice the next day to help inspire his teammates. His coach, Eric Bryant, said of Ben Bernardi, he's one of those guys you have to have to make a team go. He rarely played in games, but he always came to practice, always competed hard, and he'll go home and remember that he was a member of the team that was second best in the entire state of Illinois. You always have those types if you're about success. Someone to do the job that maybe doesn't play a whole lot. Just a spiritual leader. Superintendent Wayne Reeson. Head coach Jeff Dahl. Outstanding coach. Both coaches outstanding. Assistant coach, Kevin Stuckwich. And assistant coach, Brad Froman. Brother of Matt. And now the Wildcats. Bill Heisler. Heisler, 36 points in the game. He was 12 of 17 from the foul line. Dan Belt, 18 points. He was 13 of 15 from the line. 
Craig Weir, the last member of the big three, 29 points, 13 rebounds. You shut up all the critics, I can tell you that. What a gutty kid he is. Bob Manley. Paul Figge, remember, hey. he's the senior class president. Here's my favorite. Bob Manley made what Norm feels yeah. is the play of the game. No doubt about it. It would not get in the papers either. You mark my word, would not be written about what he did in that foul. To turn around for the three point situation to come back and tie. Casey Shaw. Now, all the players you're seeing now are guys you didn't see a whole lot of in the games, but keep in mind, these guys all went to practice every day. They competed and they made, they made the five starters better. You have to have that if you're going to be a championship team. They're part of the team. That's what it's all about. So don't get the feeling just because guys don't play that they don't deserve as much as the championship as the guys who score all the points. Randy Crow pulled a lot of minutes in the semifinals and finals. I tell you what, he also gave a break for a Belt to get an opportunity to be strong down the stretch run because he Ryan came in and spell big time. Bobby Thomas. Scott Meyer. Scott Meyer injured, but he's a state champion as well. The whole town state champion. Warsaw should be proud. I want to point something out too. Just off to the right of what you're seeing, the Spring Valley Hall players are standing, and many times you see second place teams slouching around, their backs turned, they're standing and paying attention and paying their respect to the champions that they deserve. So, congratulations and kudos to Spring Valley Hall. And now, our coach, Eric Bryant, and the captains of Hall Township, please step forward to replace the second place trophy. If you believe all the seniors. Well, and you know what, Norm? They're going to come back for a reunion 20 years from now, and they'll, that trophy will look like a first-place trophy to them. Hey, man, let me tell you. This is what it's all about. Someone's going to have to lose. You know that. But I just still say that's what sports should do for you. Build character along the way of disappointment, but you worked hard, and you, you got to honor that. They had never made it out of the Super Sectionals until this year. Warsaw had been to the Super Sectionals in 1985 and 1986. They finally got out of the Super Sectionals this year, and they went on and won it all. Warsaw, the Wildcats, the state champions in Class A for 1997, will come back to Peoria and wrap it up right after this timeout. Warsaw wins it in the State A championship game. Let's go and hear from the victorious head coach, Jeff Dahl, is with Yvonne Simmons. Of course, an outstanding tournament, a great game today. What a way to send out your seniors. Oh, they all told me that they didn't want to go out losing, and, man, they played hard. It was unbelievable. There was a couple situations that really set up that overtime. First of all, when Manley fouled Sterling, he had to go in the free throw line. Was that something you designed or something you told the kids to do? Well, we wanted to foul one of their post players because they haven't been shooting free throws well. And that was perfect because he was working for the rebound and no time went off the clock. It was perfect. And then the shot hurt around Peoria, Heisler. That was uh, Heisler as ice his veins. You know how many times he's hit shots? He hit that one at halftime this morning. Full court, I mean, a half court shot. I mean, it's unbelievable the way he comes through in the clutch. And what were your thoughts when it went up? It took forever to get the rim, but he let go of it real nice. He squared. He did everything he's practiced so often, and it was nothing but net. And just quickly, I mean, you have to be proud of your kids and overall thought about this whole tournament and the way your kids hung in there. We started the tournament. No one picked us to even win our first game except for one guy that I talked to. And we just got, hopefully we got the respect we deserve. These guys worked hard for ever since. One second grade teacher that had these guys in second grade, they told her they were going to state. So here they are. Okay, congratulations. Right here, baby. Congratulations. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Thank Jim, back to you. Well, I'm sure it'll be a nice rest of the school year for all the folks at Warsaw. What a, what a great championship run they had. And just gutty play, never give up. The big three came through. And that, I think that was maybe the most impressive thing about this championship game, Norm. The big players came through. And let's face it, many times in high school basketball, it's a tough situation. You're only dealing with teenagers. The steal of these guys on both Hall 
and on Warsaw to come through and play great in a championship game, that was the most impressive thing to me. Oh, no doubt about it. And I can tell you this right now. 1965, we won the Pennsylvania State Championship in basketball. And it's still, in 11 years of playing pro ball, the most exciting thing that I've ever encountered and participated in was winning a state championship. To see our town in Midland, Pennsylvania pull together and the community be so together as one in this winning effort, which to, to me still remains in my heart as one of the most exciting things that's ever happened to me. And it's going to be a great weekend the rest of the way in Warsaw because they claim the 1997 Class A State Championship with a victory over a Spring Valley Hall team that deserves to be called champions as well. We're going to be back here in Peoria next weekend. The Class AA Championship, the quarterfinals begin on Friday. Norm and I will be here. Tom Dore and David Kaplan will be here as well. And we'll bring you the semifinals Saturday morning, the third place game in the championship on Saturday night. Warsaw wins the Class A state title for Yvonne Simmons and Norm Van Leer. I'm Jim Blaney. Thanks for joining us this weekend in Peoria. The Sports Channel Report is coming up next.